Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my channel, Jewelry Pirate. This is Barbara. Um, I was asked to come on and do a video about Bakelite and um, how to know whether or not it's Bakelite and uh, the testing. And um, I'm also going to include um, some information about Bakelite. I'm also going to include some information about celluloid. And um, I hope you find this interesting. These are the things that work for me. And um, there's different things that you can do. And there's some things that you should not do. Okay. So, Bakelite was invented in 1907 by Leo Bakeland. It's made from carbolic acid and formaldehyde and it's also known as a phenolic resin. Now most of your Bakelite was extruded. It was not made in molds. Not to say that there isn't um, a few pieces here and there that were that were put into a mold and made, but 90%, 95% of Bakelite was done with an extrude, extruding process. They would extrude the Bakelite, form it into what they wanted, and um, they would, you know, while it was still in its heated form, they could put marks in it so forth and so on to create different patterns and stuff and Bakelite is not just comes in one color you can get a piece of Bakelite that has more than one color in it all right I'm going to show you some examples of those um, it was also used in other things besides just jewelry um, you can find it in your hair brushes if you remember a lot of your old sets that you would see on the um, vanities, a lot of those are made of Bakelite. And some were also made of celluloid. Now, celluloid is a whole different thing. We'll get into that um, in a little bit. But they, they made hair brushes out of them. Um, I can remember a hair brush that my mother used to smack me in the legs with when I was younger and being obnoxious that was made out of Bakelite and um, also they made the casings of a lot of your old radios your um, transistor radios were made out of um, Bakelite so um, the uh, things that you can use to test Bakelite are hot water and if you put the I wouldn't put the whole piece in the hot water Bakelite will not change shape now for instance if you took and you put in a lucite or an acrylic bangle or a, you know a piece of lucite and you put it in really hot water you can actually warp the piece Bakelite will not change shape. Um, and uh, what will happen is after you have it in the hot water, it's really good to run it underneath the tap and just take a little particular piece of it and get it nice and warm. Okay? It's not going to change the color or anything of it. But... Um, and then put it up to your nose and smell it. Okay, you'll get a, um, a a funny smell. Sometimes people refer to it as burnt milk. Uh, most of the time, people will say it's um, like formaldehyde. If you find um, um, in your nail polishes, you'll get that. Um, what do you call it? Like tart um, smell of the formaldehyde. But once you smell a piece of Bakelite, 
it's sort of a smell that you'll never forget. So that is one way that you can test it, and it's probably one of the most um, least damaging to the piece. Um, so you will also get a smell. You know, there's different pe people smell different things, like, like there's varnish. You get a, you know, it's a very caustic smell that you're going to get. Now, the other things that you can use is um, 409 works really well. You would take, um, and you would take a Q-tip, spray the 409 on the end of the Q-tip, and then just take and rub in one small little space here. Okay, and again, it'll turn yellow. And then you know you have a piece of Bakelite. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but the inside of this is one color, and the outside is a different color. And that's mainly because in the course of years, exposed to the elements and the air and everything, Bakelite does turn around and get a patina. So, and another thing about Bakelite, you're not going to find any seams. So if you pick up a piece that you right away think that um, is Bakelite, but you rub your fingers over it and you feel like a place where it was put together, you're going to know that that's not really a piece of Bakelite. You can test it and uh, you'll find that it's not Bakelite. Um, I brought a couple things out to show you the difference. Now, this is a piece here. These are earrings. Black Bakelite is sort of um, kind of rare. Um, and these are kind of dirty, so I'm going to also show you how to clean these. All right, um, just to get just to get the um, the dirt out from in between the um, the, um, the 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 um, what they did with this. You can actually see, um, like the part on the top here is very shiny, where they turned around and they went in and they um, like carved it after they extruded it is a matte finish, but there still gets a lot of dirt on on these. And I've had these for a long time and I never clean them. These are just nice old screw back earrings. I wonder um, with these, if these at one point in time might have been buttons. I don't want to take them apart and look at it, but that's another thing that you can also find that's Bakelite. All right, so we're going to take and we're going to test a couple of things and we're going to clean a couple of things. So remember, um, Bakelite is extruded. It's not molded. Okay, although there have been a couple of things that have been molded, but most of the process of making a design into Bakelite is made after the extrusion extruding process okay um, i'm going to show you some examples i have a little book here um, you will probably never ever find any of the jewelry in this book but there is some good examples of bakelite and a combination of bakelite and cellu celluloid together and also um, some examples of lucite all right, Lucite is, is very different also. So, now the other thing you can use is also, first we have the hot tap water, and it has to be hot, and like I said, you're not going to have to worry about your, your piece um, warping or anything, because if it's true Bakelite, um, it will not do that. All right, and you have the 409. Another one is um, scrubbing bubbles. But you don't want to use the one that comes in the aerosol can. There's also a liquid form of that. I'm telling you these other couple of things because they're things that are in your home that some people can have in their home. And if you don't want to run out and use the stuff that I use most of the time, um, you might have them in your home and you can have a little fun test and some Bakelite. So the hot tap water, the 409, and you'll do the same thing with the with the scrubbing bubbles you'll use um, a, a q-tip just a little bit of the fluid on here and then rub it on and it will turn a yellow 
Now I use the Symethicone polish and um, you don't want to use a lot of this, okay? Like I said, um, there becomes a patina on this. So if I was going to test this, I would go on the inside where it's pretty much, um, this is apple, this is what they call green apple bakelite. And um, that's the true color if you can see it inside compared to the color that's on the outside. Now this is a red, but this also has some orange in it. They've actually put some, um, if you look closely, I don't know if you can see it very well or not, but there is actually, especially inside here, you can see some orange that was put into the extrusion extrusion process. All right, so let's let's do a little bit with the Symethicone polish. Now, I, you don't need a lot of this. You need a minimal, and this is it. Now, you can buy this on Amazon. Um, and um, you can also get it at, at, at jewelry companies like um, Fire Mountain Gems. Most of your um, um, places that sell um, beads and jewelry making supplies will carry this. I honestly think it's about the cheapest on, um, on Amazon. And a tube like this I think is about, I don't know, maybe $11, $12, but it's um, a little bit of this goes a long way. So we're going to take and we're going to put a tiny bit out here, and I mean a tiny bit, and that's way too much. And we'll take one of these green apple pieces. I'm going to just dip the very tip of this. I want just a minimal amount. If you can see what I got on there. Now that's pink. We're going to put that in here and we're going to rub. And the reason why you don't want to go into the patina is you don't want to take it off. But now look at that. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it is yellow. And it's really yellow. I don't know if you can see it very good on the kiln, but it turns really, very, very, very yellow. So make sure you go in and you clean out everything. It's always good to neutralize it with a little bit of water. Now this is a piece here that um, there's no there is no white bakelite, okay, because of the fact that. Um, it was made white, but white turns and gets a patina on it really easy. And um, what happens is, like, for instance, dice. There's a lot of, um, you know, dice like when you gamble. That those were, Some of those were made with Bakelite. Marshong tiles were made with Bakelite. And what will happen is if you take those ivory-colored um, pieces and say you scratch them open which you don't want to do all right um, you will see that they're white on the inside but over the years especially like your marjong tiles um, they will be white inside now this is I doubt this is Bakelite but we're just going to do this anyway so you can see the difference. Now, I see now this is still pink. So this here is just an acrylic bracelet. Now, if you look here, grab a little bit more of this. You can take and put this on here, and this will clean any kind of marks off of your off of your bangles. So it's a very good um, cleaning and polishing um, compound. It'll take all that dirt and grime and everything off. I like this a lot. Okay, let me grab, I'm going to throw this out. Let me grab another 
Q-tip. Okay, I keep a bunch of Q-tips in a little container like this. Let's give these a test and then we'll clean them. So again, just a tiny, tiny bit on the tip of of this. You can see I got a little tiny bit. Let's go in here. And if you look, there's the telltale yellow again. Okay, so these are black Bakelite, which is very, very, you don't see a lot of black Bakelite. And in fact, a lot of people, I don't think even bothered to test it too much because of, um, it's, it's just not that much of it around. So that's all the dirt coming off now. There's a lot of dirt on here. But underneath all that, you can still see the, the yellow. Now, to clean these, I don't want to do anything um, really uh, harsh. I just want to get the dirt out. These have got like a pineapple design on them. So I always go to the, I have this. I go to the dollar store, and at the dollar store, you will find these lots of bristles but very very soft and that's what you want you want very 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 soft and on Bakelite you don't want to use like now on like my rings here I've showed you how to use toothpaste with a little water I'm just going to take a little bit of um, cleaning solution which is water and I'm putting it on the tip of the, the brush. And I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to very gently, I hope you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to go back and forth. And I'm going to clean all the, all the, the um, insides of the pattern. And, um, Now there's probably a little, a little bit of toothpaste left on this brush and that's probably why I'm getting getting some suds here. All right, so we're just going to take that and just go through. You can see how dirty the foam is getting on here. All right. We'll go this way. And then we'll go this way. We got to go around this half moon here. And then we'll just put that down. You can look at this. And... I'll show you the difference. Look at the filth. All this really nasty dirt. Can you see all that coming off of this? And you just go through and just wipe it down. Get all that off of there. It's amazing. You don't want to use anything really abrasive on any of your jewelry. That's why I love these these really cheap. And sometimes you can get five or six of these brushes in a package. Okay, now look at this. Do you see all the dirt that's on here? It's a real lot of dirt. Let me get this straightened up a little bit. Now, I want you to take a look at these. I 
don't know if you'll be able to see or not. This is the cleaned one. And it could probably use a going another going over, but I don't know if you can see the difference. But you can still see, this will dry up, you can still see the in here and near where they did the pattern. It's a matte finish. But it's a big, big difference as far as um, the cleaning of it. It really makes a big difference. So, now the only other thing I'm going to test here for you. I had a, um, a, a clip like this um, that I, I don't know where it is. got to find it. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's Bakelite, but I can't seem to find it. And I've been wanting to test that for years. This here I'll test, but I know it's not Bakelite. Maybe it'll surprise me. Okay, just a little bit of stuff on here. I actually put too much. And you can see it's still pink. This was filthy. I took and put a toothbrush, uh, not a toothbrush, a Q-tip in this earlier to try to um, clean in between. It was so much dust. And the last thing I'm going to do is just this apple, not apple, um, this red and orange bangle. And get same thing, I'm going to go on the inside of this. And we'll show you. There's that telltale yellow. Here's the pink Samantha cut down. And there's the telltale yellow. So I'm just going to wipe that out of there. Oh, by the way, I ordered my loops from Fire Mountain Gems. And they shipped today. And guess what? I found the loop today. So I have two extra loops coming. Okay, so to review on this, um, for, remember, it's a, known as a phenolic resin. It was invented in 1907 by Leo Bakeland, and it's made, by, made from carbolic acid and formaldehyde. And most pieces were made from an extrusion process. So, now I would think that maybe your radios and that kind of stuff, maybe we're put in some kind of a mold. You know, your transistor radios. Remember those really funky looking radios? They were cool as anything. Okay, so you want to put your things under hot tap water for 20 to 30 seconds. That's when you're going to get a smell. You'll smell like burnt milk, varnish, formaldehyde. Okay, and then the three forms of testing are the 409, which is the same thing on on the um, as on with the semethicon is going to turn yellow. Um, 409, just scrubbing bubbles, the liquid, not the the spray foam that you put on and it turns blue. Okay, and um, like I said, you're never going to find, because of the aging process, until you cut through a piece of white Bakelite. It will be white on the inside, but Bakelite turns around, because of its age, it was white at one time, but because of its age and it, and it gets a patina on it, you will not find um, Bakelite without a patina, that would be like an ivory or something. Okay, now, our next thing is going to be celluloid. And let me show you a few examples first of um, 
some really nice Bakelite jewelry. And like I said, this book is, a, I had bought in this, I don't know, years and years ago. And um, if you ever find a piece of jewelry in, 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 in here, you're going to be wealthy. This is a set which is made of dice and black bake light and um, very, very different. These are very, very unique things in here. Um, the ones that I like, there's a few different ones in here. Um, this is a red bake light and this is the victory sign on this is made of celluloid and this is um here is um let's see here yes this is this is from 1942 this is a celluloid unsigned pen the wavy red b for victory i'm just going to show you a couple more I happen to find these things interesting. This one I love. This was a piece. I don't know. I hope you can see this. This is um, a Revlon cosmetic promotional um, promotional pin promoting lipstick and nail lacquer. This is all made out of celluloid. Very cool. This is from the 1940s. I'd love to find something like that. Alright, so this this is celluloid. And one of my favorites, if I can find it. Oh, here's a couple of bangles. These are both Bakelite, believe it or not. And like I said, you can, um, this is a double dot bangle. Um, red Bakelite bracelet ivory dots and double dots between lacquer spots so this is a combination of a couple of things and this is a bow tie bangle red and yellow chunky bake light bracelet difficult ex execution one of a kind that's a $1,200 bracelet. That's like what I said. You're going to have a heck of a time finding a lot of the things that are in this book, but they're interesting. I got one more thing here. Now, here's a figural. I would die to find this. This is called Gone Fishing. It's from the 40s. It's um very rare brooch car figural butterscotch bakelite fish. And it's got gold leaf on it and gold leaf accents and strung onto a celluloid fishing pole. That thing's worth five hundred dollars. And don't take the the prices to um this is a very old book, but don't take them too seriously because they go up and down. But this is a very, very nice piece. I would love to have something like that. Okay, I'm really quick, I'm going to talk about Lucite. And I'm just going to mention um, that is one thing that you don't want to turn around and put in the hot water. And um, i got two examples in here, and both are by um, Alexis Pitar, who is one of my favorite. And here we have this gorgeous snake bangle. Um, this is from 2009. I have um, an absolutely gorgeous um, pendant in blue. This has turquoise eyes from him. And I also have a pair of earrings. And they're pretty much in this color. Um, this is one of my favorite designers. And um, it's a lot of times it's overlooked. It's only recently now people are becoming um, more familiar with it and more familiar of the value of it. So this is gorgeous. And then there's one other piece, which is this, and it's also on Alexis Pitar. And this is a bangle, and it has all these rhinestones set in it. This is a loose, these are loose site. And it's a big, large, and chunky, and it's signed. 
This is two inches, and this is from 2000. That's a $500 bangle. So um, this is something, one, you wouldn't want to put this in any kind of water. You don't want to take and you don't want to clean this with um, any anything really except for just a warm just a warm wipe down because you don't want to lose your your rhinestones or whatever and this will scratch so you have to be very careful now on the outside this almost looks spun and then on the inside it's kind of shiny i think you can get an idea of that here okay so let's just talk just a tiny bit about celluloid and uh, we will finish up with that and um, I'm hoping that you found this interesting. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Um, and if you're new to the channel and uh, you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. So, okay. Now, celluloid is a little bit different. First of all, it's very highly flammable. All right. Um, it's molded. It's not extruded, and it contains camphor. Um, it came about about 1900 or so, but it became really popular from 1920 to 1935 because there was a lot of pieces that were made with celluloid during the Art Deco era. This is a piece of celluloid here. Okay, and um, this here, if you put this in hot water, and you can't leave it in there very long, but just take a corner of it and put it underneath hot water, and you put it up to your nose, you're going to smell mothballs. That's the camphor in it. So, um, this is also very, very dirty. And um, I'm going to, while I'm sitting here for a second, I'm going to take and I'm going to, Give this a little bit of a, a little cleaning while I'm talking about this. Now, if you remember um, back in um, the movie days, they always had a lot of fires. And that's why a lot of um, the old movies, they've had to take and piece them together because the movies were made from celluloid and a lot of that um, melted some of it caught on fire a lot of theaters burned down in the 20s and 30s or they had fires in them because of the film very very highly flammable material you will never ever people always say oh you can test celluloid by putting a hot needle in it never ever do that first of all you don't want to take a chance of having a problem with the celluloid and also you'll ruin your you ruin your piece this is a very 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 detailed piece and you can see how much more detail that they get with the celluloid compared to the bakelite Bakelite, like I said, is extruded, and most of the time the thing is put on after the extrusion process. You have to be very careful with this. This is very fragile. I keep this in a in a box because I don't want this is old. It's beautiful though. Let's see if I can get. You see all the dirt coming off of this. I'm sitting here watching. If you ever get a chance on YouTube, and you can go to live recommendations, um, there is a, a site in Portsmouth, New Hampshire called the Strawberry Bank Museum. And they start in the very end of November, and they have an ice skating rink and people are there ice skating um well you know, mostly all day long from nine o'clock in the morning and they play wonderful music um right now they're doing christmas music i'm trying to get myself into the spirit a little bit 
So this I will lay down to drain and get most of this stuff out. But this took a lot of the dirt out. But anyway, try to check that out because it's it's such a beautiful, it reminds you almost of um, Norman Rockwell. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing to watch. There you go. Now instead, it's, it's not completely, I don't have all the water out of it yet, but look at how pretty that is and how how much work that they can manage to do on a piece of celluloid compared to a um, um, piece of Bakelite. This piece here, believe it or not, came out of a box from the Midwest. Um, not the place that I normally I normally get anything from. Um, I think it was in Iowa. Is that Midwest or is that North Northwest? It came from the same place that I got that beautiful Art Nouveau brooch from. And um, like I said, I keep this away from any heat or anything like that because. Um, I don't want it to catch on fire or anything. So this is, and it still has the tag on it, the celluloid tag, and it was more $25. It is actually a very beautiful piece. And I won't wear it because it's very old and it's very, very, very fragile, but it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now let me see if there's any more information that I wrote down here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. I didn't I didn't go into detail on the celluloid. I just wanted to wanted to bring it up and show it to you so that sometimes people will say, well, what's the difference between celluloid and bakelite? And that'll give you an idea of what the difference is, um, what it's made out of, and the fact that this is um, this is molded and not extruded that this is really flammable um, and there's a lot of a lot of other differences but that gives you you know a basic idea for for the Bakelite so anyway I think that's it now remember um, I don't have a big large um, I didn't do anything with this because this is just a piece of carved wood um, Please remember to um, subscribe, thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And um, let's just go over this, what I have here. The Symmetricone Polish, Amazon, any jewelry place you can get this at, any place that sells jewelry and stones. Remember, tiny, tiny bit. I probably have more than half still left on here. All right. Cleaning soft go to the dollar store get these very many bristle very soft brushes okay and when you get them home play with them you know get that stiffness out of them all right and um, nice warm water and for your rhinestones just a quick go over here um, I just used some Colgate toothpaste, a little tiny little dot on the end of that with a little bit of water. Go in here and, and clean. It means that the brush is very soft. The chances of you losing a rhinestone are very, very slim. Just make sure that you dry it really, really well. Much better and much safer than turning around and putting it in an ultrasonic, which can shake your, your stones loose. So... I guess that's the end of this video. Um, I'm, I, I'm doing okay. I just wanted to let you guys know where I'm at. And uh, tomorrow I start doing a lot of, a lot of work here. Um, I've been so sick. Um, the last treatment that I got, um, all I can say is that it really kicked my butt. Um, very unexpected compared to the last two. Not that they were easy this last one here i'm still sick i'm still taking anti-nausea drugs and i have very little of an appetite i have to force myself to eat 
like I said, I've already lost nine pounds, and I haven't I haven't checked myself out. When I go back to the doctors in a couple of weeks, we'll find out how much more I lost. So I have to do my insure and um, force myself into eating. I gotta start eating more pasta or something. Here's an you know, I don't know, but uh, when I literally tell you that I cannot move. I have stead serious about that. I mean, I I was good Thursday when I got the treatment. I woke up Friday. I was really not too bad. But by the time Reed came home from work on um, Friday night, I was really feeling poorly. And um, I felt like I had a fever, but I didn't. Um, I had to stay underneath the covers. And uh, I think it's that Red Devil stuff that they give you. They should go to the bathroom a lot. And just just terrible. So uh, anyway, I'm hanging in there. I don't want to get too, get just too worked up or anything. But I'm hanging in there. I do have a good attitude. And um, whatever's going on, it seems to be helping. Um, I, the, doctor, the doctor gave me... Um, an examination. I had a good report, so I'm hoping for even better after I'm done with this last, um, after I do this next treatment, and it's just before Christmas. It's like a Christmas Eve almost. Um, it's three days before Christmas. Um, that'll be the last in this series, and then I go to where a diff I'm going to get a different kind of infusion. So, and then I have to get a series of that. So anyway, that's it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I got to keep myself together, keep my head good, keep the prayers coming. I need the Jewelry Pirate Prayer Army. You've been wonderful so far. And uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming in and watching my video. And uh, I love all you guys. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have your kindness, your thoughtfulness, and your support here with me. And I know you're hanging in with me. Just have some patience with me. I will get everything caught up. And I will get that brooch video out to you probably, I'm hoping, on the weekend. That I'm very sorry about. Like I said, when I did that video and I gave you a preview that I was going to do the brooches and pendant. I'm telling you, I went south. And I just physically could not do anything. So I hope you understand. But, um, hey, I got a lot of jewelry here, so we got to get better so I can turn around and, and show you all this wonderful stuff that I have. And um, it's just that when I do a video, um, it makes more work. So I want to get all caught up with all the work and everything in the buckets of what I have right now before I turn around and start doing more videos. I processed everything except for the very last video, and I'm going to do that today. And uh, hopefully tomorrow I'm going to sit here with bags and bags and bags and try to get uh, everything taken care of. I'm pretty close. So anyway, again, thank you all. Love you guys. And uh, remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and above all, stay healthy. And remember, don't take life for granted. It can all change in a flash or in a blink of an eye. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye.